shall be, nothing shall be impossible, your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore, Jesus our God unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible, your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore. Come on, lift your voice and sing. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things. give you praise we give you glory Lord. there may be things that we're facing that we don't know how to how to manage we can't handle it on our own but Lord we know that we can look to you and today we turn to you we look to you Nothing's gonna 
gonna stop the plans you've made nothing's gonna take your love away you will always be more than enough for me you will always be more than enough for me you will always be more than enough for me nothing's gonna stop nothing's gonna stop the plans you made nothing's gonna take your or whether you've been serving him your whole life, he has more for you. Um, and uh, I want to encourage you, especially when we start this new year, to um, take advantage of this opportunity, these times that we have um, in, in singing, worshiping, even if you're not familiar with the songs um, or all the lyrics, dive in. This is a, a, a river of God's presence, and he's got more for you. There was a Bible verse I read this morning. Actually, it was the U version verse of the day, if any of you read that Bible app. And it was essentially it says, God is saying, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. So as you take a step towards God this morning, as we sing, as we worship, have an expectation that God is going to come and encounter you in a new and a fresh way.
praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name. Jesus, the name.
I'm sure many of you are familiar with Legos. Legos are awesome toys, if you will. They are the building blocks of child development. And so they, 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 they teach kids foundational things like how to share and creativity and learning how to think systematically, all, all things that are important and useful when we are growing up and maturing. And so likewise, um, I've been discussing this with, with some of our leadership team, that Legos can also be very helpful in teaching spiritual principles. And so therefore, in, in, in 2020, we are going to be using the theme of Legos throughout the year to help us focus on, 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 on one important thing that I think God is moving our church towards, at least for 2020, and, and it's this. It is learning how to grow in Christ. Growing in Christ is the thing that we are going to focus on in 2020. And growing is important to us at the River Church. If you re- read our vision statement, we actually have it here. Our vision statement is we envision uh, that, that we are going to be building communities who love Jesus and bring joy to others. And so you will notice that the theme built into the statement is growth. We, we, we want to grow as a church family. We want to grow at, at, by building communities. We want to grow in our love for Jesus, and we want to grow the kingdom of God or bring joy to others. Even our mission statement, which is not listed there but is on your bulletin, is three simple words. Anybody know what those are? No, see, at least like our youth know what they are. Uh, but grow is, is in there. And so um, for 2020, that's what we're going to be focusing on. We're going to be focusing on uh, growing in our spiritual maturity. And so if you have a Bible or a Bible app, you can open up to 1 Peter chapter 2. If you need a Bible, just raise your hand. We will bring one to you, or you can simply follow along on the screens to the side of me. But in 1 Ch- uh, Peter chapter 2, we are going to see what we're going to read this morning will be the foundational passage for us this year. And so for 2020, we are going to build on this passage. But before I read the passage to you, let me give you a little context so you can all better understand what Peter begins to talk about in chapter 2. And so Peter, when he wrote this letter, he wrote to Christians that were living in the Roman Empire when Nero was the emperor. And so I don't know if you know about this, but Nero was a little bit crazy. One tradition says that one time Nero purposefully burnt down all of Rome so that he could rebuild it the way that he wanted it, but then he also blamed that on the Christians. And so afterwards, what he did to punish the Christians who, who didn't really do it, but he, he was shifting the blame, what he did is he began to throw Christians uh, uh, into lion's dens and, and feed them. And then he would also, it, it's a little graphic, but he would, he would put uh, bodies on poles and light them. And, and, and so they would be like the night lights lining up parties and, and streets. And so it, it's actually likely that Peter had that in mind when he wrote in chapter 1. You see in verse 6 and 7, it says, In this you rejoice, though not for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested uh, so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes through uh, though it is tested by fire and so that may have been the picture uh, of what Nero was doing to Christians when he wrote tested by fire and so Peter is writing to these Christians one's going through extreme trials and so in chapter 1 uh, Peter wants to remind them of three things first that God has given us a new life. We have been born again into a new life, and the one that has living hope. And so that's our identity in Christ. But since we live in a fallen world, bad things happen. Bad things happen even to Christians. And those bad things, those trials, they, they can impact our faith, especially if they're trials that, allow, that we allow to take our focus off of Jesus. Therefore, in chapter 1, Peter begins to, to encourage us to remember to always focus on Jesus and to live in the new life that he has given us, to hold on to that life because it's, because it's what brings us victory by faith. And while that is definitely encouraging news, let me say, and I'm sure you guys 
happy uh, with this, that it's, that is easier said than done, to hold on to those things, especially when we're going through hard times. It's, it's easier heard than done. And so Peter knows this too, which is why I believe in chapter 2, he begins to teach us how to live in that hope. And it starts with one crucial principle, and we already mentioned it earlier. It starts with growing in Christ. You know, this year, my son Cade, he's my my middle son, he's been really into Legos, specifically Lego Star Wars. But my youngest son, Noel, he's grown a lot in in, in this last year, and he also has begun to play with Legos. Now, most of you guys know that Noel is, Noel is autistic. And so I mention that because when I watch him play with Legos, I, they're, they're, I, I think there is, is, is him being autistic, uh, that influences the way that he plays with them. For instance, Noel is, is, is super creative. A lot of times uh, autistic kids can think a little bit outside the box, but one thing they do, they are, is they can be very creative. And so, and so Noel is like that. And he will build these, these crazy things out of Legos. Nobody's taught him how to do it. He will build them, and they will be like, color coordinated because he's not building sets he's just like taking random legos out of a box and he will color coordinate the layers in in what he's building it's really crazy and he is very detail oriented and so he, he's so detail oriented that he will he will freak out if if what he has built if, if a piece breaks off or there's something missing like he will melt down because because he's so consumed with the details it might be something that we overlook but for him he notices it in his mind he's like what he has built is incomplete if that one little thing is missing he is all about the details but you know who's also about details god's about details just look at creation look look at the details that go into uh, our body and how our body functions. I don't know if you've ever taken time to think about that, but, but there is a lot of things that have to go right. The details have to all be uh, in place for our bodies to function the way that they do. God is about the details. Jesus even said that even the, 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 the for those of us who have hair, the, the hairs on your head are numbered. That wasn't funny, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but God, God, God cares about details, and one detail he cares about is, is, is our, are the details of our lives. How we live matters. God has a plan for us, and that plan involves us growing. That's why the Apostle Paul, he taught the Ephesians this. He taught them to speak the truth in love and grow in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. And so with that same growth principle in mind, Peter starts off chapter 2 saying this. Chapter 2, verse 1 says this. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. How do we grow? How do we begin to live in victory and in the plan that God has, has for us? Well, the first step involves getting rid of old habits that used to define us when we weren't following Christ. If you will, they are the details of our lives back when we had nothing to do with God. And so you look at this verse, and and what this verse is, it's it's really a summary of the old man. It's the summary of the old you, and at least it should be the summary of the old you. But in in reality, a lot of times, even when we're Christians, sometimes this still defines the new you. And it's not supposed to be that way. And so Peter says, if you want to grow, you got to cast that off. you got to put it away. Now, there's something interesting that's seen in the original language. So in the original language, which for this passage would be Greek, the phrase, so put away, which is right in the beginning, isn't written in what's called command form. And so, and so Peter is not saying like, hey, I'm the head of the church and, and you need to do this. Because sometimes there are things written that way in, in, in the Bible. This isn't written in the command form. Actually, it's written in a way that suggests that you need to make a choice for yourself to do this. And over the next year, that is going to be a key concept for us to learn, that growing in Christ will involve us choosing 
to live in the new life. It involves us realizing that I am a new person in Christ. Therefore, I'm going to live that way. I I am going to get rid of the old me. The old me is gone. I am going to choose to live for Jesus. And you know what? Wherever you are at today, let me just say this. That type of choosing, that choice, is something that even the most mature Christians still have to do daily. We all need to take up our cross daily and die to our old ways. We need to daily choose, I need to daily choose Jesus over my sinful desires. And here's the application that we can have for today. Right now, some of us keep choosing the old ways. And we're not living in the freedom that Jesus has given us. We're not living in in the new life that we have. And so we are stuck. Some of the most miserable people on the earth are born-again Christians who continue to choose the old way and are stuck in, in, in that way. And so it is my hope that for us as a church that we will be a church that chooses to grow in our new life that we would not let sin keep us from seeing God's purpose in 2020, that we'd have that 2020 vision when it comes to what God has for us. Because you can't keep choosing the old way and expect new results. That's crazy. Actually, you guys, some of you guys know that's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again but expecting new results. So what we got to do is we have to repent. We have to turn away from those old ways and go in the opposite direction. And so since it's the first week of the new year, again, it's it's a great time. It's a time that we're all kind of in that mode where we're wanting to start over. And so if you're in that place, now is a great time to start over and, and commit to following Jesus and commit to choosing to go in Christ. Amen? All right, Peter goes on to say, verse 2, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. If we want to grow, first we got to get rid of the old stuff, but then we got to add some new stuff. And to teach us this, Peter uses a very... uh, 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 easy example that still makes sense to us 2,000 years later. When we feed a baby, or when we have a baby, how do we ensure that that baby grows? Well, one extremely important thing is we feed them milk. Milk is what they need. And so we, 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 we give that to them so they grow. So that's, that's pretty easy to understand, right? Peter wrote this a long time ago, but it still makes sense to us today. Well, the same thing is true for us spiritually. How do we grow in Christ? Well, we have to eat the pure spiritual milk, which is the Word of God. God wants us to grow. And the way that that happens is similar to the way that a baby grows. A baby grows by drinking milk. And if we want to grow spiritually, we have to drink milk too. We got to get the Word into our lives. And so we grow by first getting rid of the old stuff, then we grow by getting the word into us. But additionally, we also understand that Jesus is both our direction and our destination. Look at verses four and five. It says, as you come to him, somebody say, as you come to him. As you come to him, a living stone rejects men But in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Do not miss, it's highlighted and and, and italicized there, do not miss that first phrase, as you come to him. Because that is a key part of growing. First off, in this passage, it's synonymous with feeding on the Word of God. But also, if we want to grow as followers of Jesus, we need to go to Jesus. We can't do it without him. Jesus actually said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And so Jesus has to be the direction 
of our lives, meaning he has to be our focus, and then we have to move towards him. We have to move in his direction. And, and, and that is a super important spiritual growth lesson. And actually, it's also one of my favorite definitions of discipleship, which which is what, what, what it means to, to follow Christ, where disciple is, discipleship is the process of doing that. Discipleship is not a destination. It is a direction. In this life, we never arrive as a disciple. Discipleship is not a class you take, and it's not a book you read. It is the direction of of your life. Discipleship is always moving towards Jesus. However, while discipleship isn't a destination, Jesus is. Meaning, Jesus, what we're looking at, what we're going towards, and he is the standard and he is the example. Jesus is the living stone, and we too are being made into living stones, or living stones being made into his likeness. And so, we keep moving towards Jesus until we arrive at him, at, his des- at, at, at that destination, destination. And let me assure you that no one in this room, including myself, has arrived at that destination yet. And so growing in Christ involves a process of continually coming to Jesus and also becoming like Jesus. As Christians, we always need to be growing. Going back to the baby example, babies stay babies, something is wrong, right? Babies are supposed to grow. If you are a 50, if you're 50 years old and you're still a baby, there's a problem, except if you're a baby Yoda. Yoda. Now, if, for those few of us in here who do not know baby Yoda, Baby Yoda is 50 years old at this, at this point in his life, okay? So that's why I'm saying that. It's okay for him, but you are not Baby Yoda. And, and for us, if we're still a baby at 50 years old, it is a problem. But check it out. I'm not speaking to anybody specifically. I'm just throwing this out here. Sometimes we have people who have been Christians for 20 years but are still babies. They should be teaching, but they haven't grown. You know what? Those aren't really 20-year-old Christians. They're Christians who have been, who are two years old ten times. So that's not right. When that's happening, something is wrong. We are supposed to grow. We need to grow. God wants us to grow. It's part of his design. Now, don't get me wrong. God, it's not like God won't use us until we grow to a certain point. God uses us as we grow. God does things through new Christians, baby Christians. But the more that we grow, the more useful we become in his kingdom, the more equipped we are for the calling he has on our life. And the bigger, th- and God can begin to trust us with bigger and bigger things. And, and for example, let, take my friend Jude here. Now let me tell you, three years old, uh, th- three years old. <laughs> that was not intended to be funny, but thank you, CJ. Uh, Three years ago, when we started the River Church, I probably wouldn't have trusted Jude with running the live stream, which he's doing right now. Because back then, he wasn't ready. But let me tell you something about this young man. I've watched him over the past three years. He has grown, not only physically, but he has grown spiritually over the past three years. And now, he does an excellent job at that. And that's because as he's grown, he's become more useful. And so, and, and so th- that, 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 should, that should be an example for us because God has a plan for our lives, but it does require us to grow. And when we don't, we can't do the things that God has planned for us. And so as a church, we should not be okay with being stuck. And so as we look towards 2020, I want us to resolve to do the very opposite. I, instead of being content or being stuck, I want us to passionately grow up into our salvation. And so um, I'm going to have somebody, Jonathan, help me out for a second. So I want you to 
begin to pass out, and I'm going to continue speaking, but pass out one piece to each person in here. Now, <laughs> if you guys did not hear that in the live stream, he gave his dad the smallest piece <laughs> intentionally. Now, the reason why I want us to be resolved, to have this resolution to, to continue to passionately grow up into our salvation is because, let me just show you why that's important. Look at what God has for us. It's amazing. Verse 5 says this, you yourselves like living stones, are being built up into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood and to offer spiritual sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. Now, this is just a glimpse of what God has for us, but do you see how awesome it is what God is planning? Why, why, we, why we need to be a part of or, or what we get to be a part of? as we grow in Christ. And so if, actually, if you're taking notes, I think there's maybe three things you may want to write down. This, this is what happens when we're committed to growth. When we are growing in Christ, the first thing is we are becoming something beautiful. God takes our lives and forms it into a spiritual house house that God himself dwells in. We think that the White House is special because presidents live in that house, but how special is the house that God dwells in? The second thing is when we are growing in Christ, we not only become something beautiful, but we're becoming someone beautiful. As Christians, our new life in Christ involves us being part of what he has said is his holy priesthood. You are, if you are a Christian today, if you have given your life to Jesus and you are following him, you are ridiculously special. You have an extremely important role in the kingdom of God. Finally, the third thing, when we are growing in Christ, we accomplish something beautiful. We accomplish something beautiful. And so again, if you're writing those down, we become something beautiful. We become someone beautiful. And the third thing is we accomplish something beautiful. And that third thing, when, what we get to do as a person who's growing in Christ is we begin to worship God. And let me tell you, that is the most important thing. It is the most meaningful thing that you could ever do in your life, and that is to glorify God. Thank you. The church of old put it this way, the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him to ever, to forever. That, that, that's what we're about. That's what man was created to do, was to glorify God and enjoy him for other, forever. And as we close, I want you to look at the Lego piece that you have in your hand. And I would like for you, if you would, to hang on to this piece for two weeks, and so that means that you're going to be willing to come back two weeks from now, but we'll get more into that in a second. And so whatever piece this is, let me, remi let me remind you or let it remind you that you are part of something much bigger than yourself. And so, yes, the contents of that bag were not just random Legos. They go to a set. And you are part of a set. You have a purpose. You have a place in something that God is building. And so keep this piece, whatever you got to do, keep it in a visible place and keep it in a place where you won't lose it. And why this is going to be important to keep, keep this and, and to guard it is because in two weeks from now, I am going to have you all hopefully come back to service and, and then bring this piece with you and during the service, I'm going to have Cade build that set. And my hope is, is that every piece will be present and we're going to have a complete set. Because here's the thing, if you've ever played with Legos or if you've ever bought a set, you know that sometimes even the most insignificant piece may be the very piece you need to put it all together. Without that piece, you can't finish the set. The set is incomplete. And you know what? That's like the church because I don't know how you guys feel about yourself, but hopefully this will help you feel differently because, again, the church is the spiritual house of God. We are all being formed into the spiritual house of God. And so when we don't grow or when, we are, when we're missing, 
the set is incomplete. Because there are no insignificant people in the church. Everyone is needed. All of you are needed. And we all need to grow build something beautiful here in Glastonbury. And so let this piece also remind you that you need to grow as a Christian. But growing in Christ isn't just about holding on to a Lego piece. So let me give you two practical steps for spiritual growth in 2020. First, make sure that you practice coming to Jesus, meaning that you spend time in God's Word, that you read or you listen because listening counts, You read or listen to the Bible. And some of you, you already knew that I was going to put that as an application point because I always put that as as an application point, and, and that's true. But why do I do that? Because it's important. What did we read earlier? God's word is spiritual milk to us. If we want a baby to be healthy, we need the baby milk. So if the word of God is how we grow spiritually healthy, then why is it that many times we starve ourselves? That's not good. And so we need to read the Bible. Give yourself the ability to grow. And if you don't have a Bible, again, we can get you one. Or as we always say, if you have a smartphone, you can download the YouVersion Bible app for free. And again, it does count. You don't get less spiritual points if you listen to it. I was just talking to my buddy yesterday about this, that, that hearing the Word of God It's still feeding on the Word of God. It's still getting the Word into you. You will still grow by listening to, and and if you don't know, if you have the Bible app, there's, for most of the translations, you can just press play at the bottom and it will read it to you. So that that counts. Now, if you are intimidated because you, you find the Bible hard to understand, that's okay. Guess what? It's still hard for me to understand. And that's because we are all growing, but we still need to eat. And so it, it, let's just say that you, you read sometimes and you're like, what the heck is going on? L- let me suggest this. At least start with the, I'll suggest the New Living Translation. That, that is a version that I really like. It is a very easy to read version, but it's still accurate as far as translation goes. So New Living Translation, on the Version Bible app, you can select its NLT. You can select that one, and it's very easy to read. Additionally, if you do have Version, friend me on you version, and yes, you can do that. If you need to know how to do that, see me after service or, or ask your neighbor, say, hey, do you know how to do that? The reason why is because this Monday I've invited, and if you friend me, I'll, I'll, I'll invite you into the, this group. I've invited people to join me starting on Monday on a seven-day devotional plan that's all about how to read the Bible, and it's on you version. And so we will have the opportunity to read that together. And then also at the end the, uh, of each day, there is an opportunity to discuss uh, what we talked about or what was talked about in the, in the devotional. And so we could ask questions. Like maybe you're on there and you're like, hey, what did this mean? And, and, and all of us will be able to see that. You don't need to feel embarrassed about that because we're all growing. We all need or keep learning. And so we'll be able to talk about it that way. And actually, that leads me to the second step for growth. The second step is make sure that you are in community. Because check it out, you don't grow in isolation. God didn't design it that way. We, aren't, we are designed to be in relationship with God and one another. We're designed for community. And remember, God loves details. And one of the details that he's concerned about is you being present and involved in your local church, being part of his body. Because without you, it is incomplete. Let me put it a different way. It's a little bit grosser, but it's it's real. If you think about the body, if you cut off or isolate a part of the body, what happens? Bad things. And it doesn't, that part doesn't grow. It actually dies. And so if you want to go, grow, you got to prioritize being at church with your church family or getting plugged into a life group. you got to be connected to the body. And so if you need help with that, as Janelle mentioned earlier, come see somebody with a green lanyard, or you can turn in a Connect card. I think there's a box on the Connect card that says, tell me my next steps. You could do that and say, hey, I want to learn more about how to get involved with the life group, whatever it is, and you turn that in, or, or 
whatever, whatever you need help with, come see somebody or tell somebody because we want to help you with that. And so I'm going to call the worship team forward. And as we move into 2020, again, my, my, what I believe God is taking us towards, our, our vision, if you will, is that we will continue and grow into a strong and healthy church that impacts our community for the gospel. And that starts with all of us being committed to growing in Christ in 2020. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, that you are so good to us, Lord. And that we thank you, Lord, that, that you allow us to even have seasons where we can start over or, 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 or recommit or, 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 or be committed to going up a level, growing more like you, God. And so during this New Year's season, God, as we're talking about resolutions and maybe starting over some new things, Lord, uh, help us as we read in your, in your word today, help us to get rid of the old stuff that, that, that causes destruction in our life and help us to come to you, Jesus, and, and help us to see you as I, both our direction and our destination, God, because we want to grow, Lord. We want to live with purpose. We want to live the way that you created us to live because we believe that is where life is at. Life is found in you, Jesus. And so, God, help us to do whatever we need to do, whether it's getting involved in a life group, whether it's downloading a Bible app, whether it's, whether it's actually reading that Bible. God, help us, stir us by your spirit to be able to do those things so that we can uh, be formed into something beautiful, Lord. Build that all into our life. And we're asking all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.